Hi guys, you're with Chandeep Chhabra at Gurli. Um, in today's session, we have uh, some amazing VLOOKUP tricks for you. I hope you've gone through the article and uh, you've understood the VLOOKUP, uh, how does it work. The first trick that I have for you is a dual criteria VLOOKUP. Let me just explain um, uh, this trick with a case. So we have uh, cities here, we have the departments and we have the employees. Now, if you just take a look, uh, we are supposed to work in this table and we are supposed to find out that uh, for the city of Milan uh, and for the Department of Operations, how many employees uh, were there. And for the city of Miami and for the city of Re and for the Department of Retail Operations, how many employees were there. So I just don't have to do a one criteria VLOOKUP, but I have to do a two criteria VLOOKUP. Now, if you just take a look how VLOOKUP works, if I, so if I just write VLOOKUP, it just gives me one VLOOKUP value, okay? I cannot have two values here. I cannot say that I want to look for million as well as I want to look for operations. So it's, you know, I can either look for million or I can either look for operations, but here I have to look for both and then, you know, kind of return the employee number. So let's see how this can be done. Okay, the first thing that I have to do is I have to find a way to combine the cities and department and make one uh, data set out of it. So let's see if I can do that. So I have, uh, let me just create a dummy here. Okay, let's just call this a dummy. Now in this dummy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine the city and I'm going to combine the department together. Okay, so now this is gonna give me, the AND function actually combines the two things together. Okay, so this has given me the combination and I can just simply kind of drag it down and I can get uh, cities and departments for each one of the data set. Now let's just take a look at uh, our VLOOKUP formula. How do we make a different type of VLOOKUP formula? So I'll write VLOOKUP and uh, I want to do a VLOOKUP on uh, cities and department both. So I will write VLOOKUP cities, the same AND operator here and operations and I want to find million and operations together in this table array this entire table array okay uh, because uh, I have combined the cities and department in the dummy and the, these are the employees so uh, I can technically select these two columns as my data set so I am trying to look up for uh, million and operations in this table array um, like I said before uh, we have to lock the table array so you can also call it freezing the table array. So by the F4 key, you select it and you press F4 and it gets frozen. The dollar sign is the indicator of that. And then um, I want to fetch the employees, which the employees in this table array is the second column. So I will write comma number two. And obviously it has to be an exact match. So I write false. And just like that, I have the employees with me. I can just drag it down and I have the employees with me. So this is how you can do a dual criteria VLOOKUP. Uh, let's just go forward and take a look at the next trick. Okay, uh, in this trick, uh, what I have for you is uh, the employees. There are cities and there are departments and I want to get uh, the department for this employee ID. So if I would be just writing a simple VLOOKUP, uh, I will say VLOOKUP, look up for this employee ID. Where do you want to look up? look up here in this entire table array now when I select the table array um, when I was here when I was trying to select I have to go up I have to scroll up to get to view my formula once again and then I start writing the formula ahead so we'll just try and sort this problem out through a naming trick so let's just name our uh, uh, data uh, the data that we are trying to look for the employee ID, let's just name that data. So I'm selecting all of this data and I'm going to the name box here. This is the name box and I'm just typing DA, DA, that's my data. Now this data is named, you can see that data. Now I'm going to go write a VLOOKUP formula once again, VLOOKUP, trying to look up what? Trying to look up for the employee ID, which is this. Trying to look it up where? Now that, now that I've named this entire um, you know data set as data so I can just simply type data okay now it's going to fetch that automatically 
and uh, then I have to write the column index number the column index number is nothing but the position of what you're looking for so I'm looking for department in this entire table and department is on the third column so first column second column third column here is the department and I will write number three and then obviously I can just say false because I want to have an exact match press enter and I have the re human resources and I can just drag it down now the good thing about this is that um, you don't even have to lock it like in the earlier examples we were trying to lock our range because we have just named um, the range as data so we don't really have to lock that so that's a good thing about it and you don't also kind of lose sight of your formula all right this is the naming trick so um, let's just go and look at the third trick which is a naming trick plus plus now what do i mean by a naming trick plus plus um okay let me just go back to trick number two and introduce you to a problem that will be solved by naming trick plus plus okay so you can you can ask me that okay um we have added uh, the data range we have named the data range and we have added it to our formula and we are using the data now but what if i have more data so as of now my data okay sorry as of now my data is running up to row number that is 90 and uh, what if I add one more row 91st row or 92nd row or 93rd row will this range automatically expand if I add more data or not well to the, an the answer to that is no the the range will not expand uh, with the kind of naming that we have done as of now uh, but uh, that is what uh, the naming trick plus plus can solve for us so let's just see so what I'm going to do is I am going to convert this entire data into a table. So the shortcut for that is control T. I go anywhere on this uh, table and I press control T, T as in tango. And it says that, okay, um, where is the data for your table? The data is right here. It also gives me an option that uh, is my table having in headers, having headers or not. So yes, I my, my table has my table has headers. So I will say OK and it converts it into you know, a table. Now the good part about table is that uh, the tables are self expanding. So like I just did for the data in my earlier example, I will just do it for the table as well. I will select the entire table and I will go and name this as my table. Uh, my table and press enter. Uh, be sure to press enter uh, after that. Now I'm just going to write my VLOOKUP formula, VLOOKUP, look up what, look up this value, uh, look it up where, look it up in my table, okay, the table gets selected automatically and I'm trying to get again the department which is the third column and obviously it has to be an exact match, press enter, you get the human resources, you can drag it down and you get, you know, the similar result as you had got in the earlier example. Now the good thing about this is that this is self-expanding. So if I just want to add one more employee, let's say I add employee ID, uh, let's say 100,000, 100,000, okay. And then I write any city, let's say Mumbai, oh, and I write any department, let's say logistics. Okay. Now, let's say for example, I change the last employee ID to employee ID 100,000, 100,000 and uh, let's see if it fetches the logistics department or not yes it does okay so if you just take a look my table has now expanded to one row extra in the last example there were 90 rows right now there are 91 rows so no matter how much data you add your tables are self-expanding and they're just going to expand but be sure just to enter the data right underneath this you cannot just start entering the data from here you cannot just write employee id from here it would not take it up so if you just write something here it would take it up employee id let's say 1000 and it takes it up as a table you see that okay so that's how that's how that's how it's done this was my uh, third trick the naming trick plus plus uh, let's just go and take a look on the fourth trick negating vlookup errors so I'm sure um, you've been applying VLOOKUPs in, at your work um, and sometimes it just gives you an NA uh, or an error that the value was not found. So I'm just trying to apply a VLOOKUP on the employee ID, trying to find the department again. Uh, so I'm just going to select this data, go back up, lock it, 
like I do it always and uh, then I want the department which is the first second third column and uh, obviously the exact match so I write false for that now when I drag this down I get an a NA, NA. That means that my VLOOKUP formula is not able to get the employee ID 2000 and uh, because it did not find the employee ID 2000, there was no result uh, in the department. Now these kind of errors are okay. Uh, they're not your fault because your data doesn't even have those records. So it's not your fault, but they, d they don't really look good when you submit your, you know, kind of worksheet to your supervisors or to your managers or to your clients for that matter. So you might just want to kind of hide that error. Uh, not show up so I'm just going to write wrap my VLOOKUP formula inside inside uh, a formula called if error if error so I'm saying if there is an error in this formula or you're not able to find uh, the value uh, the employee ID I I want you to return me a dash a simple dash now dash being a text I have put that into uh, an inverted comma so I just press enter and uh, since uh, the VLOOKUP formula was able to find this employee ID it returned the human resources now when the VLOOKUP formula will not be able to find the employee ID it will return you a dash you see that okay so that's how the if error works if error you write your formula if the formula gives you an error you just write what you want okay so that was my uh, fourth trick you can negate the VLOOKUP errors. My final trick uh, for the day is uh, how, what do you do to abandon VLOOKUP and it probably gives you the same result, okay? Although we've been talking about VLOOKUP, but kind of it looks strange if I talk about abandoning VLOOKUP, but this is really a cool trick. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is um, for this trick to run, I'm just going to select all my data and I'm going to go to the formulas tab and the formulas tab I'm going to go to the option called create from selection now before I actually click on this button I'll I'll just tell you what am I trying to do I'm trying to name this entire row as Ravi and I'm trying to name this entire row as Paul I'm trying to name this entire row as Aditya and so on and so forth and I'm just trying to name this entire column as printers this entire column as camera this entire columns as copiers and stuff like that and then we'll see that you know how the trick is going to work but let's just first name it so although i have an option to select each of the line and then just go type ravi here and then select this line and then uh, go in the name box and type paul here or select this column and then type printers here but that's going to be too long and tedious so let me just uh, avoid typing too many names here and let's just use the automatic function of creating names so i select this entire table and i go to uh, the formulas tab in the formulas tab i go from create from selection option the alternative for that is control shift f3 so create from selection i click here it gives me uh, a little dialog box it says that okay i understand that you're trying to name the cells automatically but where are your cell names kept so my cell names are kept in the top row and my cell names are kept in the left column which has already been by default ticked so I'll just have to say OK as of now and I say OK now if I just take a look here look at this this has been named as drive automatically this has been named as printers automatically and so on and so forth but we haven't really come to the trick as of now let's just go and examine the trick so let's say for example I am trying to look for uh, Ravi and uh, his sales in drivers so I'm just trying to fetch this value so I'm just trying to find Ravi it just gives me Ravi here and then I press the spacebar and then I press DRIVES drives. Now the spacebar is actually an intersection between the two ranges that have been named. As soon as there is an intersection which is denoted by the space that you give here, it actually gives the intersecting value. So if I press enter, I get 168. Um, that's, pretty, that's a pretty cool trick. So let me just do one more for you. Let's just try. Uh, I'm just trying to find the value for Sonica and uh, maybe I just want uh, that how much uh, scanners did she sell so I will just say scanners Sonica scanners the intersection is it is here make sure to give the space uh, between the two re named ranges and press enter and uh, it just does the trick 
Well, those were my five tricks uh, that I wanted to share with you. Um, I hope you really enjoyed them and you're going to make use of them. Well, thank you so much for staying with me and enjoying the VLOOKUP video and the article. And uh, take care of yourself. Goodbye.